straight talk, no chaser. Girl, how you made that? Hey y'all, so let's get into our beautiful cocktail that we got going on here, y'all. It's giving very much spring, aka summer, I don't know. But anyways, y'all, we're going to start our cocktail off with some ice. We got some Hennessy going on here, y'all. I'm doing about three ounces of Hennessy. This will make more than one cup. You can do this part to your liking, but I'm putting three ounces up in there. All right, so we got some guava mix here, y'all. We're squeezing that in. We're squeezing some lemon juice in, y'all. If you want it to kind of be a little bit sweet, go easy on the lemon juice, okay? So now I'm adding in some frozen dragon fruit pieces. And I'm also using this Simply Mixed Ology here, y'all. This is strawberry and guava mojito mix. So we just giving that a good old shake so them dragon pieces can do what it needs to do with our drink. Pouring our mix in our cup, y'all. I got some lemon in here and some dragon fruit pieces on top and inside the cup too, y'all. And that is our nice, beautiful cocktail. And all you have to do is enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, confidants, welcome to the Hennessy Zone. Straight talk, no chaser. This place was created for those topics that require, well, a little something stronger than just champagne. Over here, we think and drink responsibly. Now, let me give you a disclaimer. Everything discussed in the Hennessy Zone, all of the commentary is based on my opinion and is done so in accordance with the Fair Use Act, which allows for these discussions for the purpose of entertainment and teaching because there's wisdom to be gained from everything, whether it's good or bad. Now, we don't attempt to solve cases over here, but we do discuss them. And I love to hear your opinions about each of the cases we discuss. So please do me a favor and drop in the comments and let me know what you think about today's case. But keep it respectful because this is a safe place and we gotta let them know the classy drink Hennessy too. What's going on? It's your girl, your big sis, your BFF, the Empress here. And we're gonna get right into it. But before we do, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and also that notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into the Hennessy Zone for a new show. Now, for today's story. I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again. We spend so much time talking about these men and running these men in the ground about how they're dogs and they're trash and they're not worth the flesh they're printed on and how they just pop women with babies and run off to do their own thing or run off with the next hole down the block. We spend so much time tearing down these men as women. But where's that same energy for these nothing as bottom of the barrel as sperm incubators that these children are being forced to call mama? Where's that same energy? Because just as much as some of these men ought to be named Kibble, right around the corner, there's probably a broad with some children that ought to be named Bits. But no, we let them slip through the cracks and then stuff like this happens. Some lady called DCFS. And, what? And kind of made some claims that you had a child that actually shot themselves. Absolutely not. No, I, not. It, it sounds crazy to me, too. <laughs> That's Sushi Staples, a mom from Illinois caught on body camera denying she has a son. The problem? She's lying. Man, this is crazy. I don't know. I think I'm being framed. I'll lay out the entire sad story that includes the death of Staples' 10-year-old son. A two-year prison sentence for Zion's death. She pleaded guilty to hiding his body in a trash can for eight months. But Staples actually wants out of prison early. I'll have more on that in a bit. The investigation into Sushi Staples started back on July 25th of 2023 in Rock Island, Illinois. Police received information from a woman who had known Staples for many years. At first, it was just like a regular phone call, like, how you been? How you been doing? And stuff like that. And then I heard her, like, crying a little bit. And I asked her, I said, what's wrong? And she just stated to me that Christmas will never be the same again. Um, she then stated to me, I said, why, what happened? Um, and she was like hesitant to bring it out and tell me. She then told me that her son um, had... She was gone from the house and she told me that her son had shot himself. And who do you know her son as? 
Zion. Okay. That friend of Staples told police that she confessed to hiding Zion's body. Um, she stated that he shot himself. At the time, he was nine years old. Um, I said, what do you mean he shot himself? Um, how did he, I asked her some questions like, how did he get a gun? Like, how did that happen? She explained to me that she had just stepped out to run some errands and she received a call from her daughter Serenity saying that Zion was gone. And she said, what do you mean gone? She said, why is he gone? Why is he, is he outside telling him to get back in the house? But she told me before she left, he kept saying that how he missed his dad or something like that. And he was crying because he felt like he missed his dad or something like that. She had stated to me. Then she said that um, Serenity said, no, he's on the floor. He's bleeding everywhere. She feared that they would take her kids away. And she was scared to lose everything. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she said she still had him there. She purchased, she told me she purchased a burning barrel um, from Home Depot or something like that, that you burn leaves and stuff in, and she stored him in that. I'm like, what? And she said, yeah, he was stored in that in her basement. She said she tried to set him on fire. Now, after hearing this, Rock Island police, of course, went to Staples' home to investigate, and she put on quite a show. Take a look. Are you Miss Staples? Yes, how can I help you? So, we got kind of a weird phone call. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know Latricia? No. No? I don't um, know anybody out here. Some lady called DCFS. And, what? And kind of made some claims that you had a child that accidentally shot themselves. Absolutely not. No, I, not. It, it sounds crazy to me too. That's what. Um. I am so sorry about this. So, the reason we're here, okay, is because we're investigating a call that we we had. Okay, the officers came out and talked to you last night, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, we have to handle that real seriously, okay? Because the allegations are that you have a son and that he's deceased and he's here in this house. Okay, so. That's that's where we're at right now. Do you have a son named Zion? No, I don't. You've never had a son named Zion. No. Are you claiming benefits for a kid named Zion? No, I haven't gotten any benefits for anyone. Staples had an answer for everything. Police informed her that the Department of Children and Family Services in Chicago had had contact with her children, including Zion. Staples again blamed her ex's girlfriend, who she called a stalker. You filed for public aid. You got your daughter. Getting benefits since I was in Chicago. So I'm not sure. I told you my identity was stolen. Mm -hmm. My taxes were illegally filed. I went through a whole thing with the IRS. That was not me. But who is this Zion that was interviewed by DCFS up in Chicago, right in the presence of all your other children? That, there was the no Zion one Staples. No yeah, one was interviewed. Where, where did you say the name named Brian Staples for you? Was. Because the call was made about my son Kentrell by his father. Yes. It was never made about a Zion Staples. But when they went there, there DCFS was the only child that they spoke to because it was regarding him had frequent visitors. We had kids in the neighborhood come over. So Some of those kids that were implicated were not, in fact, our children. They were there. So you're saying there was a kid in your apartment that was not your your kid named Zion? I didn't say his Staples. name was Zion. No. Somewhere here, we got to clear this up with the Zion Staples. The detectives then confronted Staples about information they had received and the fact that she had texted someone about the police approaching her the night before. After that officer left last night, you texted this person and was talking it's to him. pictures of them now. Well, there, we have to take pictures of the whole house okay. and then we'll search just to show that we're not like breaking stuff and everything else we're like not that. Your place. So you were pissed off that the officers were here and then you i didn't know who it was because i thought it was this girl that found my number again because nobody has my number so i thought it was her harassing me again that's why but i who? told the so officer then, so last then night who did you text and i thought it was tony you catch a break from this because we have the whole text thread between you two right after the officers left it's pretty personal with each other too like you guys very well know each other right? 
but I thought it's talking about somebody's daughter it's talking about because it's going back because people are shitty they say crap about your kids for what but you guys know each other it's not a random just I'm texting a stranger getting mad it's you two know each other you know what people come after me all the time and these are the same people I lend my hand to I pay for lawyers for people I help people do things so people envy you all the time what can you do about it Eventually, police told Staples she was going to jail. Turn for me. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to jail? What am I going to jail for? What have you I done? You just admitted to fraud. So now you're going to railroad me on fraud? Railroad you what? We're trying to figure out where your kid is. My you're kid. saying that he doesn't this exist. My kid. So now you're trying to railroad me. I'm railroad you what? You did your this to yourself. Just saying he didn't. I didn't. I didn't get any benefits though. I didn't file any IRS returns. You're in if possession you of false documentation and you already said that you you signed up and have them for financial aid. But I didn't. That's what I told you. Police searched Staples' house extensively, going from room to room, and then Staples was taken to jail. She was charged with several felonies, including concealment of a death, obstruction of justice, and failure to report the death of a child. Police found Zion's body in a metal trash can in Staples' home. He was wearing Spider-Man pajamas. The coroner determined he died from a gunshot wound, likely suffered in December of 2022. We begin with continuing coverage tonight of a Rock Island woman who hid the body of her 10-year-old son in a garbage can. Today, a judge handed down her sentence. The sentence of the court is gonna be two years in the Illinois Department of Corrections, six months in mandatory supervised release. Today's sentencing comes after Staples pleaded guilty to endangering the life of a child back in January. Both her attorney and the Rock Island State Attorney agreed to a partially negotiated plea. An emotional Staples spoke out in court stating she wishes she could change what happened to her son. I should have done more and I should have made the right decision, but I just don't know what happened. I am not a criminal, I am not a monster. I am just a mother who have tried over and over again, no matter how many times I fall, to get up and do the right thing again. There needs to be an incentive for people who own guns to buy trigger locks, or have safes, or store these weapons where no children or other people with mental health issues can access them. Staples has been credited for time served and has one year and five months left on her sentence. No, I'm not gonna let her slide with that. You are a monster. You are, absolutely. Because no real mother, not a real one, is going to know her child is injured, possibly unalive, and her first thought is to put the baby in a, in a plastic bin to try to set the baby on fire. Your child, that you carried and gave birth to, the one that you love and do everything for, and that's why I'm fighting and working so hard. They're injured, and your first thought is to put the body in a bin and hide it away. No thought for the other children that were there, the ones who called you to let you know that your son was injured. No thought about what's going to happen to them if I just get rid of their brother. They're not gonna feel the type of way. They're not gonna wanna know where their brother is. But you're a mother, you care about your kids, child. In the words of the doll, you gotta be strong because we fall for all the tears. And yes, there are some mothers that have it hard. There are some mothers that don't have it as easy as some others do. But at the end of the day, they're not sitting back watching their children hurt. I know mothers with no money that's gonna hitchhike away to a hospital to make sure their child is okay if anything goes wrong. And you're telling me that this mother knew her child was shot and her immediate thought was to put the baby in a bin, but you're not a monster? I beg to damn differ. You absolutely are. I'm not giving you a pass. And then you turned around and, and denied your seed, but you love your children? How can you fix your mouth to deny something that came out of you? And it wasn't so much that you denied Zion. You denied this baby ever existed. How can you as a mother fix your mouth to deny that a child of yours ever existed? Because that's a whole different layer to this, right? Because it's one thing to deny someone. Oh, but it's a total different beast 
to deny their entire existence as if poof they were never created they meant nothing they are a vapor they are a ghost they are made up obviously they are make-believe because that's what you're saying when you deny ever giving birth to a child that you carry and it is absolutely insane and then for the friend to say that she was going to burn him but then you just put him in the trash bin and left him your baby sitting in the trash for eight months that's just one layer to this right the second layer is this happened in front of her other children so you didn't care about their mental well-being their emotional well-being you didn't care about how your children would deal with this seeing seeing that they, that their brother just disappeared after this horrible accident can you even imagine the emotional trauma that they're going through but that they're gonna have to deal with for the rest of their lives the mental trauma that this inflicted on those children that this sperm incubator didn't care enough about and then to just take him and place him in the trash and leave him there i'm sorry after she stuffed fabric softener sheets in the vents and moved the can to the garage knowing that your child was in there and just went on business as usual but kept getting benefits for him though right you know the child that never existed you kept getting benefits for him though but you're not a monster child I think there should be a special place three miles beneath and down the stairs at the base of the foundation where the fires of hell are formed for people who harm children or participate in it or are silent about it. And how do they even know this sperm incubator didn't force these kids to say that he shot himself? I mean, did he even die right away? Do we know? because I don't believe anything she has to say. I'm sorry, that's my opinion. And to think she only received a year and a half for this. A year and a half off of two years because she received time served for the amount of time that she was already locked up. As if a year and a half is all this baby's life was worth. This baby that was discarded in a trash can. Might I keep saying that the mother was gonna burn, but was gonna continue to keep trying to get benefits for it. All his life was worth for being discarded away in the trash by his mother was a year and a half. It shows you how screwed up our justice system is. But a person selling weed can get 30 years. Please make it make sense. Make it make sense that this baby's life is worth less than marijuana. Because I'm a mother, I can't just give her a pass. Not only that, not only am I a mother, but I'm a godmother. I'm a grandmother. My godchildren have had children. So please don't tell me that you're doing everything you could as a mother and you're so hurt because you loved your children. Come on now, you, you, you're not gonna be able to just piss on me and call it rain. You're not. I have nieces and nephews and there is no way in hell one of my nieces or nephews, my godchildren or children, friends of children come around me and I see marks and I'm not questioning them to find out what happened and when and if there's a problem that we need to address or calling their parents to figure out what's going on. I had my god baby and he was only a few months old, came by my house and he had the worst diaper rash I had ever seen. Not only had he had a diaper rash, but he had, because he was such a chunky baby, he had a rash under his rose. Oh, I hopped on the phone with his mama immediately. What's going on with my baby? Who's keeping my baby? Because this is coming from someone leaving feces sitting in his pamper against his butt for long periods of time. This is not just coming from urine. And I went and bought that baby some desitin and some powder and made sure that rash on his bottom and on his neck was cleared clean up. Not a scratch, anything is coming up on one of mine and I'm not questioning it. That's why I don't under that's why I keep saying we live in a see nothing do nothing era. Better yet, we live we live in a see something do nothing era. Because you're trying to tell me that no one did anything and this baby was missing for eight months. That's that's eight months of not one family member being concerned enough to go over there and see what was going on. Because you're not gonna be able to just tell me anything. No, I watch too much investigation discovery. You can't just tell me anything. 
I don't care how many times me and my sister get into it. If I call to speak to one of my nieces or nephews, guess who gets on the phone? One of my nieces or nephews. Even if we so mad at each other where she don't say nothing to me, but she just hands the phone to them. I don't care. When it comes to mine, we not going to play about mine. And she's the same way with my children. We don't do that to each other. So what do you mean not one family member showed up to this house and said, if you don't open this door and show me where my nephew is, I will have all of the ABC boys over here. The DEA, the FBI, the CIA, whoever needs to show up to bring me my nephew so that I can make sure they're okay is gonna be at this house in the next five minutes if you don't bring them to this door. Nobody cared enough to do that. So let's take a look at an article to see how this all started. According to QCOnline.com, a Rock Island woman accused of hiding her son's death for more than five months received a two-year prison sentence on Friday. In July of last year, police found Zion Staples' body in a garbage can in the garbage of his Rock Island home, according to authorities. Investigators think the 10-year-old died sometime in December of 2022 when a gun he was playing with went off. Authorities believe his death was an accident. A memorial to Zion Staples sits outside of his Rock Island home where he lived, shown in August 2023. Authorities do not think Sushi Staples, now 38, was home when her son died, but think she concealed the boy's death once she learned of it. She faced charges of obstructing justice, concealment of a death, failure to report the death of a child under 13, and endangering the life or health of a child, according to court records. In January, she pleaded guilty to the count of endangering a child as part of an agreement with the Rock Island County State's Attorney's Office. During an afternoon hearing on Friday, Judge Frank Burr sentenced Staples to two years in an Illinois prison followed by six months of mandatory supervised relief. Y'all, we can't make this stuff up. <laughs> we just can't. Staples will have credit for time she served in the Rock Island County Jail in relation to the case, court record state. Staples also qualified for the day-for-day -day credit on her prison term, which could further reduce her actual time incarcerated. As part of the agreement, the state dropped the remaining charges the plea agreement also capped Staples' potential prison time at five years. During an early hearing in the case, Rock Island Police Department Detective John Shepard testified that the other children lived at the residence when police began their investigation. During interviews with authorities, some of the children said the 10-year-old was playing with the handgun and that he accidentally shot himself, Shepard testified. The other children said Sushi Staples would not, was not home when Zion died. Initial autopsy results indicated that the 10-year-old's death resulted from a gunshot wound to the head, Shepard said. A mitigation hearing was held ahead of Fur giving the sentence. In such hearings, the defense and the prosecution make arguments about what they think the sentence should be. They can also present witnesses. Defendants can also make statements before the court. Fur also had access to the present tense investigation report that detailed Staples' background. Such reports are meant to aid a judge in determining the correct sentences. During Friday's mitigation hearing, Rock Island County State Attorneys Dora Villarreal and Rock Island County Public Defender Hanny Corey reviewed several parts of the case, including accounts of the boy's death and Staples' behavior and background. Shepard also took the stand to provide additional testimony while Villarreal and Corey questioned him. The gun with which Zion shot himself was high up in the closet in a room, Shepard testified. Staples kept the door to that room locked. The eldest of the other children in their early teens at the time had a key to the room. On December 21st, 2022, the day that police believe Zion died, one of his eldest siblings went into the room to get hot chocolate, but did not lock the door when leaving, the detective said from the stand. After the shooting, one of the other children called Staples and told her Zion had shot himself, Shepard said. 
Police began the July investigation after receiving a tip about Zion shooting himself and Staples keeping his body in the basement, Shepard testified. In the initial parts of that investigation, Staples denied that Zion existed at all. When presented with a copy of Zion's birth certificate and other records, she told investigators she had them forged to collect benefits, Shepard said. During later interviews with police, Staples began providing more information, Shepard stated. She made several statements to the police on why she did not report the boy's death, including that she was distraught and did not know what to do. Staples also told the police she wanted to save up money to get an attorney to ensure her other children would be taken care of. Other family had asked about Zion and Staples told them he was hospitalized and unavailable, Shepard testified. When one wanted to visit him, she told the family not to come. The four remaining children in the home are now with family, Shepard stated. Villarreal said Fur should give Staples the maximum prison sentence under the plea agreement. Among her arguments was that serious harm was done in that Zion died and there was the need for a determent, a deterrent, I'm sorry, to help prevent such incidents from happening in the future. Staples was leaving children home alone while she worked full time, Villarreal said. Had Staples called 911 after Zion died, the case in which she faced sentencing on Friday for would not have happened, Villarreal stated. <laughs> Corey argued for probation. Prior to the death of her son, Staples had little criminal record. He also said she was unlikely to repeat the behavior that led to her being before fur on Friday. Like, come on. Yeah. This is what I'm saying about our justice system. So she got a pass after she put her baby in a trash bin and their response was she was unlikely, unlikely to repeat the offense. She wouldn't even said anything if it wasn't reported to them, she would have thought she got away with it and she would have, y'all. Okay, let me continue. It is easy to judge Staples for her behavior after Zion's death, he said. It is harder, however, if people try to put themselves in her shoes in that situation. Again, this is something else that I don't understand, right? And this is why I'm saying, so this baby's life was worth less than marijuana because it's easy to understand how this woman in this situation could completely discard her child as trash but it's not easy to understand how a young man or a young woman who sees selling weed as their only way out because they can't get a job and they need to provide for themselves or provide their families it's not easy to understand that situation so they get 30 to 40 years but in this situation we need to just put ourselves in her shoes right because putting yourself in in her shoes is going to help you understand how after your child shot himself in in the head your immediate concern was not trying to get him assistance because he could potentially still be alive just not moving but your thought is let me discard of the body in what world does anybody in those shoes understand in what world does anyone normal and sane who cares about their children put themselves in those shoes? So then it goes on to say that Staples was abused when she was in foster care, he said. She was trying to support her family. Please help me understand what does being abused in foster care have to do with this? Have to do with this because you have your own family. And what does needing to support your family have to do with what you did? Because Zion was your family too. How much support did you provide for him? What did you do for him? What motherly, motherly instinct kicked in for Zion in this situation? But then it goes on. Staples also made her own statement to Fur before he sentenced her. The statement included that after Zion died, she was able to make rational decisions. Sure she was. She was able to do an application to get benefits or to continue to get benefits in Zion's name. So what do you mean she wasn't able to make rational decisions? She was rational enough to put dryer sh sheets in the vents. She was rational enough to move the bin from the basement to the garage so it wouldn't smell. So what do you mean she wasn't able to make rational decisions? 
So then it continues, and Staples said she'd been in foster care and saw things hard to imagine. She did everything she could to keep her children from experiencing what she did. The pain caused by the shooting has not eased, she also said. It doesn't get better, Staples told her. While she was in the jail, she had time to reflect. Staples said, adding she failed her children, her family, and her community. She apologized for her actions. No, she didn't apologize for her actions. She apologized that she got caught. That's what she apologized for. Because if she was sorry for her actions, she would have done something to rectify it before her baby sat in a garage for eight months. She also continued, watch this, it gets better. She also continued and said she hopes to start a foundation in the name of her son that will promote the use of gun safety and locks she told her so you don't want to start a foundation in the name of your son to help mothers not make horrible decisions that are going to affect their children for the rest of their lives or to teach mothers how to better deal with trauma so it doesn't affect their children no you want to start a foundation that will promote the use of gun safety and locks really that's what you thought of after your baby so nothing come on now so it looks like further details emerged according to QWC, uh, I'm sorry, KWQC.com. So they're reporting a timeline of events that kind of led up to this, right? It says the mother of Zion Staples has been charged with concealing the body of her 10 year old son in a garbage can in a Rock Island garage. Uh, at the time, no one was charged in the death. But today new tales are emerging about the timeline leading up to his death and a woman who said she tried to alert authorities for months. According to DCFS, the agency first had contact with Sushi Staples in 2003 and 2004 when it removed her two oldest children from their home. She has eight kids who now range in age from eight year old twins to a 20 year old. Another complaint didn't come until 17 years later in 2021, when a tipster said Staples had tied and confined one of Zion's older brothers. DCFS ruled those allegations to be unfounded. The next important date in December last year, that's when prosecutors believe Zion died. The coroner has said preliminary findings show he died of a gunshot wound. Where he died is unclear. Two calls from the same tipster a week apart led to the discovery of the body. TV6 investigates spoke to that tipster. TV6 is not using her name because she's involved in the investigation. She says she made at least two calls to the Rock Island Police, one in February and one in late May or early June that weren't fully investigated at the time. Two more calls were made to DCFS in July, including one the week before the body was discovered. DCFS confirmed that account, but it is not clear why it took another call a week later before the agency acted. We tried to obtain the police reports from the tipster's earlier calls, but those reports are sealed because they are part of the investigation. Last week, the state's attorney told TV6 Investigates that detectives are still questioning people. Meanwhile, Rock Island Milan schools have said Zion was never enrolled. Neither of his siblings were. It begs the question, how could a 10 year old boy just disappear without anyone noticing? Sushi Staples is next due in court on August 23rd. Her attorneys are expected to argue to keep cameras out of her court proceedings. So of course this has already been taken care of so this was an older art article but I did want to see the timeline of events because this is why I'm saying that our system is just really screwed up like you have DCFS that takes children from parents who they shouldn't and leave children with parents that they should take them from like the system is screwed up and until we figure out a remedy for it we're going to continue have it to have issues in cases like this this lady had several DCFS calls and she's an awesome mother. She did nothing wrong. I mean, I do understand, don't get me wrong, because I said in another video, the reason that the system is so screwed up is because there's so many people, jealous, envious people, who use the, the system to try to exact 
revenge on boyfriends and girlfriends and all of that stuff that the system don't know when someone's telling the truth and when they're telling a lie but to sit back and have something like this not be investigated who calls the police calls dcfs and reports that a woman told them that her child shot themselves they bled out in the house and she is keeping the body in the basement and you don't run feet to the ground 10 toes down to go figure out what's going on and don't stop till you get an answer i am so confused so confused and she already had two children taken away why were the other two taken away and what was so different about that that you wouldn't have expected this those are my thoughts i the more i talk about it the angrier i get Tennessee zone drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this situation with sushi staples and the decision she made concerning her child if you can please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button that notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump in the Hennessy zone or maybe even the chalet for another show consider supporting the channel and always remember that right now all proceeds are going to assist my daughter who just recently lost her child my grandbaby and any support that you send will be greatly appreciated but that's all we have for this one thank you for joining us in the Hennessy zone where we always give straight talk no chaser again thank you for tuning in to the Hennessy zone now raise those glasses high Hennessy and a do think and drink responsibly and stay true till we meet again Ta-ta.